Welcome to everybody to the third session of this uh, tutorial for the empirical macro toolbox. Uh, let me share the screen. And let me So today we are going to talk about uh, four topics. Um, how to estimate large scale VR and uh, Favar models. How to deal with uh, panels of VR. How to estimate mo uh, VR models where you have data at different frequency or you're missing data and how to do forecast. So there is nothing particular difficult in estimating large scale VR models in, uh, in the toolbox or toolkits. The only things that you need to be aware is that uh, when you use a large scale model, the imprecision is gonna be uh, quite large. And so the best option is typically to use a Minnesota prior with the typically larger value for tau than the uh, default uh, which is three, so values between five and 10 are probably uh, uh, appropriate uh, for this case. Um, there is no uh, specific option here for the uh, Bayesian, uh, um, large scale Bayesian uh, VAR uh, suggested by myself with Ciccarelli. Uh, it's implemented in the Brayer toolbox if you want to use it. Another things you can do in the in the toolbox is basically to separate two sets of variable, the one that you want to consider and the one that which you think are auxiliary. And you may want to compute factors out of the auxiliary variables and then jointly use the variable that you care about and the factors inside your VR. Uh, there are different ways of computing factors. Uh, uh, the simple possible way is to use static principal component, which are basically uh, uh, implemented with this command PC underscore T, where Y1 is the data and one is a scalar in indicating how many uh, factor you want to use and transfer is the transformation you want to use. Zero means no transformation, one you want to demean and to demean and standardized. The outputs are basically the, um, the error, the principal component, the eigenvalue and the standard deviations of these functions. Um, in case instead of using principal component, you have a very large number of uh, cross sections, you can simply compute the mean of the uh, data set, or you can use a trimmed version of the mean and you can trim away uh, the, the, the value that you specify here in the second input for percentage. Once you have done that, then you can call uh, uh, the bvar command that we have used uh, in the past and uh, specifying that the uh, inputs, the, the data that you're gonna use is now either the principal component and an additional set of variable y3 or the mean of the <clears throat> uh, variable that, uh, that are uh, not interesting to you and the variable that you care about and you use a uh, number of lags, you specify also the number of lags. Now, when, uh, use principal, <coughs> excuse me, when you use principal component uh, and you standardize uh, the data before calculating a principal component, uh, you need to rescale uh, 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 the estimate to take that into account. And this is done with the function rescale favar, which basically takes um, as an input uh, the standard deviation, the uh, eigenvalues, and the number of factors. And these are scales, basically the coefficient of the favar. And with that, you can rescale uh, then forecast, you can rescale impulse responses. For example, if you want to forecast uh, and you have no shocks, you use this uh, output, uh, sorry, subfield of the, of the output. Uh, you take the mean and you rescale it as I'm done here. Now, the, in terms of panel of ER, there is nothing specific about this in the, uh, in the toolkit. 
but there are a number of examples in the manual and in the exercises which allows you to do to sh shows you how you can do this. So, for example, if you have uh, uh, a, a, a n units for which you have t observation and g variables, you can do uh, exact uh, pooling of cross-sectional data with fixed effect, and you can see the example in the manual. You can do average time series estimator in which you basically estimate uh, a VR for each unit separately, and then you average the result. You can average uh, uh, estimates or you can average impulse responses, or you can do partial Bayesian pooling where uh, the, the Bayesian prior here is uh, data driven or user supply. Now, when you do this, uh, remember that implicitly you're treating these units as being uh, I like islands, meaning that they have no interdependencies, uh, contem either contemporaneously or not. And if you're worried about a common uh, component, you can use the VRX technology that we've discussed uh, before to, uh, to do that in, uh, in, in particular. Now, uh, the, one of the things that the toolkit does is estimation by mixed frequency. And the typical example is when you have, uh, uh, say, variable uh, at the monthly frequency and a variable at the, uh, uh, the weekly frequency on a variable at the quarterly frequency and another one at the monthly frequency. And basically what the, the uh, toolkit does, it, it performs uh, um, it puts the VR in a state space, uh, uh, generate posterior draws for the for the uh, <clears throat> reduced form parameters and the covariance matrix, and then uses the Kalman filter and Kalman smoother to get estimates of the unobservable uh, uh, state. And then uh, this is repeated uh, uh, over time in inside a, a Gibbs sampler. Now you don't have to do anything uh, special here. Uh, so you can you can use uh, flat prior, Minnesota prior, or conjugate prior, and there is no worry about here uh, because it's automatically triggered in case there are missing observation. So if uh, if you run the BVAR and you have some NA in your data sets or you have missing observation, uh, it will uh, uh, automatically start uh, the mixed frequency estimation and you will see a warning printed uh, on the screen. Um, the idea is that uh, the, the, uh, to set up a state space model in which uh, if you have a stock variable, uh, you have uh, <clears throat> uh, basically the quarterly variable are the last value of the uh, monthly variable. And if you have a flow variable, these are treated as being an average over the, uh, uh, the quarter. So uh, what, what, if you have a stock variable, you don't have to do anything automatically is done in, in the toolkit. If you have a flow variable, you have to use option uh, mixed frequency invariant the number, which tells you how many uh, uh, averaging of the observation you're gonna do. And uh, there are two additional uh, Field, subfield in the BVAR uh, output, which is the uh, Y field and Y filter, which have this mooted and the filter estimates of the latent variable. So in terms of practice, then again, in the BVAR tutorial, you have uh, three sets of programs, uh, one which basically run uh, uh, a FAVAR model, one which shows you how you can compute uh, panel estimates, uh, estimates of impulse responses when you have a panel of data. And then uh, uh, there's an example which uses a uh, mixed frequency uh, BVAR uh, with monthly and uh, quarterly data. Here is computing the uh, monthly uh, version of uh, GDP. Now, uh, as I said, you don't have to do anything specific about uh, computing forecast. They are automatically computed uh, with and without shocks uh, for any of the estimation procedure that we have discussed. Instead, if you wanna do conditional forecast, then you need to set a bunch of options. The most important one is the endo index and endo path. 
So the endo index is a row array containing the index of the variable, which are constrained. So for example, you want to do conditional forecast, conditional on a path for interest rate, then the endo index should be equal to the number of, uh, uh, in, the, in the vector where interest rates appear. And the path instead contains the, <clears throat> the path for each variable that you want to restrict. Uh, and or index if you have some exogenous variable uh, in it. Now, uh, the, uh, the subfield the forecast EPS contains the shocks which are used. Now, this is are useful because sometimes the shocks that are generated by some conditional forecast may be very unreasonable. So it's a good idea to plot them uh, to, uh, uh, to see if they are reasonable or not. And you can use the, uh, the option dot uh, for horizon to change the forecasting horizon, which uh, automatically is set to uh, 24 uh, periods. This is a command to plot the forecast, which is plot forecast. And it takes uh, uh, as input uh, the, the matrix containing the forecast. So for example, BVAR forecast, no shocks, the data uh, Y, the uh, time period uh, uh, T, which is the, the, the array, and then the options. Now the options are useful if you want to present the forecast in, a, in units, which are not the one that uh, uh, you are estimating the model. So for example, you may want to present uh, forecasting growth rates and growth rates could be uh, uh, calculated with one period change. It could be four period change, or it could be 12 period change if you have monthly data. So you have to specify the option order transform equal to one of these if you want to change uh, the forecast. Now, as I already mentioned, uh, there is uh, <clears throat> no uh, uh, option and no uh, special function in the toolkit to do stochastic volatility. But uh, my co-author uh, in his work has been forced to have to do forecast uh, and time of COVID, and following uh, the, the, the paper of Primicheri and Linza, he has set up basically a VR in which you know, the standard lags entering is uh, X uh, variable, phi are the coefficients, but now the shocks have a weight in front of it, W, which could be uh, customized accordingly. So typically the weight is a set of one for every possible T. Now, uh, there is the uh, two options, which uh, uh, is called option heteroscedastic weight, which you can use to change the weight that certain shocks have. So for example, if you have shocks <coughs> in the uh, period to 2020 month two to month seven, which are unreasonable or extreme, you can use the weight that you see here to identify that particular period and reweight them appropriately. Um, these uh, weights need not to be set a priori as I've done here. They could also be optimized. And here you have the, basically the commands that you want to use to optimize exactly on the weight. Uh, there is an example in the, uh, in the tutorial and the, in the manual and the example in the tutorial, which basically shows you how you can do this and how uh, good are the, this way of taking into account changes in the variance for uh, estimation and forecasting. So the final thing are the, uh, the tutorial here, the examples. Uh, there are two in particular, as I already mentioned, the VAR heteroscedasticity to do this heteroscedasticity uh, and reweighting of shocks at different point in time. And there is a, an example with uh, unconditional and conditional uh, predictions. Okay, that's it for uh, this session. I um, uh, hope to see you again for the last uh, session uh, soon.